je suis avec euh, Paul Blake pour euh, Mint in Box. Hello. Euh, comment êtes-vous arrivé à incarner euh, le personnage euh, Grido dans cet étrange euh, projet qui était Star Wars à l'époque Strange. <rire> um, I was working with um, Anthony Daniels, who plays C-3PO, in a, a television for the BBC in England. And uh, he rang me up one evening and said, I'm doing a sci-fi movie. The director's looking for other actors. Are you interested? And that's how I got the job, as simple as that. What was your feeling on the set? Well, I think you have to remember that in 1976, most uh, science fiction movies were... Um, were B-movies, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes or something like that. So I had no expectations that this film was going to be any different. And in fact, on the very first one, everybody else uh, kind of thought the same. I, uh, we were just treating it as another job. It was only later on that we realized we were in a movie that might stay around a little while longer. Comment le personnage vous a-t-il été présenté George, when I, when I first met him, George Lucas, the, the director, uh, just said, you, could you play an alien? <laughs> And I said, well, uh, yeah, of course, George. Um, so uh, I got sent a script, um, the original script of the very first movie, and, and read it and saw my little scenes, which seemed to be kind of cowboy scenes so I kind of understood that so it was something to um, uh, to latch on to as a, as a character really so that's how I kind of that's how George introduced the character to me How did you react when you saw the costume? <laughs> I didn't see the costume for a long time uh, not really until about a week before we filmed the, uh, the my, all my scenes Uh, but the head, the mask, um, I had to do a, a, a day in the, um, in the wardrobe department doing a life mask, which they make out of plaster of Paris, and they put it on your head and then pour in a solution which goes into a rubber, which forms the mask, which finishes about here. But in those days, in 1976, they were very primitive, um, and they didn't move the ears or the eyes it was all just a mask um, and I first saw that more or less the day that I appeared on set to do the filming so it was quite a shock <laughs> I wish I wish George has got all the the, the costume at Skywalker Ranch in uh, in California Were you talking during the shoot, during the scene? Were you talking or just...? Yeah, it, we did the scene in English. Harrison was very generous. He, he did um, my uh, bits from behind camera and fed the lines to me in English. And I did the same to him. And then I, I must say at the time I thought, well, they can't hear anything from inside because I was mumbling like this. It was just inside here. <laughs> so you couldn't hear much. Uh, so I wondered how it was going to appear. I thought, oh, well, I'll be dubbed. It's bound to be dubbed. But in fact, it, they, they put part of the, the scene through a synthesizer, um, an uh, electronic synthesizer, and, uh, and then d did a little bit of dubbing with one of the voice actors uh, later on in the year. But it's mostly my voice, which sounds like, what up, what up, oh, no. I speak fluent Rodian now. <laughs> George Lucas a réalisé quelques plans supplémentaires dans lesquels Grido était interprété par une femme, Maria de Aragon. Euh, on vous voit tous les deux euh, à l'écran. Well, there were two of us. Um, as I said earlier, I did everything uh, with uh, Harrison and all the scenes. But it's uh, the reason why there were two of us was because I thought all my bits in the movie would be um, the bits that were cut because I did at least a week's filming with um, the actor who played Jabba the Hutt, who was a, an actor called uh, Declan Mulholland, very good Irish actor, and who was great as Jabba. But after about three or four days of shooting, George realized he wanted uh, something bigger for Jabba the Hutt, a much more you know, impressive presence. And that's why all that was then cut, those scenes with, with Declan. 
so I thought I wouldn't be in the movie at all. Uh, and then when we filmed the now iconic scene, um, we, they had no close-ups of Greedo speaking or the ears moving or the eyes. And that's what Maria did about a year later, because by that time I was working on another project. So uh, George got Maria. So when you see the little ears things, move, that's not me, that's her. That, but that's why there were two of us in the, in the film. But everything else, all the scene with Harrison and all the other bits was me. Lors du remaster en 97, Lucas a réalisé un changement majeur dans cette scène qui a fait hurler les fans. Euh, comment est-ce que vous avez réagi à ça Well, I mean, I... <laughs> it's George's toy. He can do what he likes with it, basically. And he did. Um, I enjoyed the original three as, as they were. But I do think some of the digital inclusions were very good. Uh, and it kind of upgraded some of the, um, of the sequences in the film. And of course, George invented industrial light and magic so that those effects could be put onto the films. And every movie since has benefited from the, that amount of um, complex uh, computer uh, additions to all the scenes and all the, uh, all the movie scenarios. So I think without inventing industrial light and magic, none of the uh, future franchises of Uh, the, the Marvel stuff, or the Deadpool stuff, or the uh, Avengers stuff would be possible. So I do like some of the um, uh, remastered stuff, but I still prefer the originals. So uh, who shot first? <laughs> had to be asked, didn't it? You had to ask. He did. We were this close. I was. How could I miss? How could if if I'd shot first, I would have run off with Princess Leia. I would have defeated Vader. The whole franchise would have been Greedo's. I should, I should have shot him when I had the chance. But no, all I wanted was the money for the Millennium Falcon. Seemed a reasonable thing. So he shot first. <laughs> You've heard it here, folks. He shot first. Votre personnage Grido a continué à vivre euh, après euh, ce premier film, notamment dans la série Cyclone Wars. Et, euh, et certains jeux vidéo, notamment Star Wars Battlefront. Est-ce que c'est satisfaisant C'est extraordinaire. Je veux dire, le Battlefront game est uh, très cool. Oui, et Greedo a beaucoup plus de vie dans d'autres autres films. Je veux dire, je pense qu'il était dans E.T. comme une petite figure. Il était dans Jay and Silent Bob. Many, ils ont mentionné lui beaucoup. Donc, so Greedo a une autre vie, que je suis très pleased pour lui. Selon vous, 41 ans plus tard, pourquoi les fans apprécient encore Grido Well, it's a mystery. It is a mystery. He's uh, he's such a a, a likable villain, but totally inept. <laughs> totally uh, without um, any kind of professional ability. Otherwise, I think he would have lived a bit longer. But I mean, everybody loves Greedo because he he came and he died so quickly. Uh, and um, I, I now have a great uh, affection for him. Est-ce que vous saviez qu'une nouvelle espèce de poisson-chat a été découverte par un biologiste en 1998 et qu'il l'a appelé Pecoltia gridoi en l'honneur de Grido I did, which is called Grido pectora, pectoria. I thought, yeah, it's a complete honor, but it's a. Um, I, I did actually write to the university and, and thanked them for naming uh, a new species of catfish after Greedo. So I think on my tombstone I'm going to have a little picture of that catfish there because it's a, it's a real honor but, uh, and very cool. <laughs> Paul Blake, merci beaucoup. No, no, no. Thanks a lot. De rien. Enjoy your stay in Paris. Thank you very much. Thanks for the question. Au plaisir. Avec plaisir. Bye bye. Thank <music> you.